Welcome back to my Jets Connected franchise here on Madden 19. Last episode we just barely took down the Patriots in the last game of the regular season, mainly due to the fact that Tom Brady was injured, Rob Gronkowski was injured, David Andrews, and Shaq Mason were all injured in that game. The only player who was injured for our team was Tremaine Johnson, and he's actually going to be out for a little while. I'm going to go over the injury report for a couple teams, for us, the Jaguars, and probably the Patriots, because I'm actually really curious to see if those injuries were long term. But it is now the end of the season, we are in the playoffs, we have to take on the Jaguars who are 8-8. Eight and eight. Before I do that though, I can spend some experience points. I'm not going to show the stats in this video. The stats and the awards and everything will be shown in the offseason video. But right now I'm just going to focus on the playoff games. We don't have any experience points to spend on starters on the offense. Davis Webb has one though, so I may as well spend this. I really don't care what we get up on him. I'll just put it in a strong arm. Why not, right? He's just a backup. He's going to come in very rarely. Hopefully, Sam Darnold doesn't get injured in this game or anything. On the defensive side, though, Darren Lee has five, which is awesome. I want him to fit the scheme, so I'm going to go in the field general until he fits the scheme. I just think that's smarter. I kind of know what he's all about, like, stat-wise and everything. Like, that was three to block shed. So now his block shedding is pretty decent. It's at 78 with confidence. His zone coverage is really bad. I'd like to get some zone coverage upgrades, but I don't really want to go into pass coverage here. I really want you to fit this scheme, though. Hopefully he will eventually. Awareness, block shed again, play recognition, tackle, and zone coverage. There we go. Come on, field general. He's not going to fit this scheme. His, the, the other trait keeps going up. Block shedding, pursuit, tackle, zone coverage by two. Run stopper keeps going up every time I upgrade field general. He's an 80 overall, though, with confidence, which is pretty cool. Awareness, block shed, man coverage, and three to zone coverage. His zone coverage might be pretty decent by the end of this. One more. Please fit the scheme. He's not going to. He's an 81 overall, though. That's nice to see. There's a five overall boost, or five uh, stat boost. Two to block shed, one to man, play rec, and pursuit, and then two to zone again. His zone coverage got boosted a lot by that. Marcus May also has two. Let's go into zone for him. Hopefully he can fit the scheme. And there we go. He's going to be a scheme fit. That's nice to see. What's his zone coverage going to go up by? Only two. But I think that was one to strength as well. His zone coverage is already a 78. That's really not that bad. Let's continue with the scheme fit here. It's a captain on the defense. Definitely deserves to be. He had a great season. Three to awareness, two to zone coverage. Perfectly fine by me. Who else has experience points to use? I'm just going to go to this tab here. Upgrade players. Lack Edwards, JJ Wilcox, and Jordan Leggett. So I'll get these up quick. Just going to power for Lack Edwards. Maybe his kick power will go up. It's usually just awareness. Yeah, okay. So awareness by three. Doesn't really matter there. JJ Wilcox. I'm going to keep going into run support. Why not, right? I think this is only experience point that he's had this season. Four to man coverage, two to zone coverage. His man coverage is still only a 59. And then Jordan Leggett doesn't really play too much, but I'll keep going into possession, I guess, just to get him to fit the scheme still. That was a huge upgrade. There's a ton of stuff in that one. That was a nice upgrade to have. All right, well, he'll be a pretty good backup 10 end for us. We have to take on the Jaguars. I already mentioned that, but also I already mentioned I want to check out the medical center injury report, whatever you want to call it. Let's see who's injured for our team. I know Tevin Coleman and Tremaine Johnson are. So Tremaine Johnson is out for another four weeks. Tevin Coleman is out for another two weeks. So Coleman could potentially come back. Tremaine Johnson will not be able to come back, though. Let's check out the Patriots. Gronk has an abdominal tear, and he's out for a four weeks, which sucks. Devin McCourty. I didn't even notice he got hurt. He's out for five weeks, but Tom Brady is back. Shaq Mason, David Andrews are both back as well. That team can for sure still go to the, like, the Super Bowl pretty easily. But first, let's get into the game against the Jaguars. They have a good roster. You guys should all know what they're about. They're only 8-8, eight eight, but they have an amazing defense. It's going to be hard to move the football. So I know I just kind of hyped up the game, but... I want to also show something else out really quick. I changed the sliders a little, for those of you who want to know. I feel like the last couple weeks have been a bit too easy. So I didn't change any of my skill, because I like the amount of points I'm scoring. I don't think I'm like blowing out opponents or anything like that, but I feel like defense has been a little too easy. So I upped a lot of their stuff by a bunch. Most of them went up by two. Run blocking, I moved up by almost like six or seven, I think. I didn't touch the interceptions or pass coverage or tackling. I think that's perfectly fine where it is. Because I still throw interceptions, they still have good pass coverage, and they can still tackle well. So I'm not really worried about those. And pass defense reaction time, I think I kept the same. I may have changed that, I don't really remember. But run blocking was the big one. I want them to get good a good running game going. 
I shouldn't be able to just destroy them every single run play. I don't know why I can. But I did also change, you know, the pass blocking uh, and the fumbles and stuff like that. Just to see if we can get some more realistic games here. Now, we are going to get into the game against the Jaguars. The Jets are returning to the playoffs once again after having an 11-5 season. They played very well throughout the year. Their defense really kept them in a lot of their games. I'm sure their record would be good enough for first place in a bunch of other divisions, but they did come in second place behind the Patriots. The Jaguars are 8-8 eight and, eight and actually are seated higher than the Jets. You can tell because, you know, we're playing at the Jaguars stadium. They have home field advantage in this wildcard game. I'm guessing then the Jaguars won their division. Makes a lot of sense since they were 8-8 eight eight in the playoffs. I really would doubt an 8-8 eight eight team would win a wild card spot, you know, and I like second place in their division or something. But the Jags do not have a bad team. I'm not sure how they went 8-8. Eight eight. They usually play really well in Madden, but they have Leonard Fournette. Blake Bortles plays really well. Great defense. Jalen Ramsey, AJ Bouye, of course, you guys know how it goes. The other wild card game going on this weekend is, you know, the Oakland Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But right now, the Jets are starting off with the football at their 25-yard line. Darnold dropping back out of a shotgun look. Firing this one downfield to Robbie Anderson. They're taking a deep shot right away. The Jets have been pretty aggressive so far this season in some scenarios, and they're trying to continue that here. Robbie Anderson just beat A.J. Bouye, you know, on press coverage there. Third and six now for the Jets. Darnold checks this one down to Terrell Pryor, who tries to fight with Davis to pick up the first down, but he's not going to be able to. But like I mentioned, this Jets team is aggressive. They're trying to be aggressive here in the playoff game as well. Thomas takes the handoff up the middle, not really contested for a couple yards, and picks up seven. First and ten now. Jeremy Hill looks like he's about to get the rock here. Let's see what he can do. Following the blocking well, finding the hole, getting to the outside, but gets slammed by Barry Church, the pretty hard-hitting safety. That sounded weird. Pretty hard hitting. I don't know. Third and 14, though. Darnold under center drops back, tries to fire this one to Terrell Pryor. A bit, you know, behind him, the throw. I would have liked it to be more out in front, but that's okay. The Jets will settle for a field goal. Now, Blake Bortles goes with the play action to Leonard Fournette. Fires it to the left side. This one's going to be picked off by Richard Robinson, only playing because Tremaine Johnson is out. Robinson didn't really play too much this season, but he's making an impact pretty early in this game. Third and eight now. Empty backfield look for the Jets. Darnold dropping back. Has a receiver wide open in A, but it's way too long, and Davis comes up with the sack. I think the Jags have like three sacks already in this first quarter. Saxonville is back in full effect right now. Speaking of sacks, Blake Bortles sacks is sacked there. He does fumble, but number 68 picks it up. Is that Andrew Norwell? I'm not even sure. I think it is Andrew Norwell. But Blake Bortles, another play action to Leonard Fournette. Pretty clean pocket, fires this one to D.D. Westbrook, who seems to be his favorite target in simulation, at least. D.D. Westbrook usually develops into a god after a couple seasons. That was a nice 25-yard completion, but it's going to be 3rd and 12. The Jets' defense playing pretty well right now. Bortles, under pressure, throws this one to Leonard Fournette, who's going to be met after he tries the spin. Didn't look like he picked up the first down, but the judges are going to give it to him. The referees are going to give it to him, I guess I should have said. 3rd and 9 for the Jags right now at about midfield. Bortles throws this one to D.D. Westbrook. Again, he just gets open really easily, apparently. And he's just a great receiver to have in Madden. Bortles is also a great quarterback to have in Madden. First and 10, the handoff goes to Leonard Fournette. Met pretty quickly by Darren Lee, but he is able to break out of the tackle. Brian Poole, though, you know, and the reinforcement troops to pick up the tackle. Three rushes for negative two yards for Leonard Fournette right now. The Jets are doing a pretty good job at stopping him. Another play action. Actually, no, it's just going to go to Corey Grant. Very fast running back, of course. Change of pace back pretty much for this team. I guess TJ Yeldon is hurt, so Corey Grant's trying to fill that role. Third and three. Leonard Fournette takes the handoff. He's able to pick up the first down. Four rushes for two yards. Really not playing too well right now, but I guess get enough there to get the first down. First and ten now for Bortles. Under center. Throws this one. Could have been intercepted. There was another play earlier in this drive that also could have been picked. So Bortles could, you know, could have had three picks by now. Of course, if he threw that one earlier, that one probably wouldn't have happened either. But Blake Bortles now on third and seven. Fires to Dante Moncrief, who can't come down with the grab. And the Jaguars will tie the game with a field goal. First and ten now. Out of the pistol is Sam Darnold. Trying to find someone to throw it to. Finds Terrell Pryor on the drag. Telvin Smith, though, is a very fast linebacker and can catch up to Terrell Pryor. Probably one of the only linebackers in this game right now who could cover Terrell Pryor at tight end, considering Telvin Smith is very fast and used to be a safety in college. Jeremy Hill takes the handoff up the middle. I kind of said his name really strangely. Jeremy Hill. Let me enunciate a little better. Second and three now. Darnold kind of has some receivers open downfield, but doesn't want to take any risks in this playoff game. Even though the Jets are being pretty aggressive, going forward on fourth down, Darnold's still trying to play it kind of safe. First and ten, Darnold looking around the field. Decent protection there, gets slammed as he throws it, actually. Our Darius Stewart is open, catches the pass behind Barry Church, and is able to break out of his tackle and go into the end zone to put the Jets up once again in this game. Ten to three, that was a huge play for our Darius Stewart. He's really coming on strong at the end of the season and into the playoffs here. Nice pass here to Dante Moncrief. 
He torched the Jets the last time these two teams played in the regular season. Pretty sure he had over 200 yards receiving. First and 10 now for Blake Bortles. Handoff goes to Leonard Fournette. His first real like nice gain of the game so far. Breaking out of some tackles as well. Seven rushes for 20 yards. Second and four. Empty backfield look for the Jaguars. Firing quickly as Blake Bortles finds ASJ. Pretty reliable tight end there, at least in Madden terms. He's very athletic. He has great stats in the game. Second and six right now. Blake Bortles. Play action. Never mind. I keep thinking it's a play action whenever it goes to Corey Grant, but makes a couple of guys miss. One with a spin move and just breaks the second tackle with the contact. Two rushes for 25 yards right now for Grant. Having a pretty productive game currently. First and goal. Blake Bortles trying to run around, find someone open, but gets leveled by Henry Anderson. Henry Anderson's coming off a pretty solid season for the Jets right now. Second and goal at the 14-yard line. Blake Bortles firing to the left side. Finds Keelan Cole. Jamal Adams misses the tackle, and Cole is able to dive into the end zone to tie up this game. Well, pretty much tied up. Josh Lambeau does make the field goal, or the extra point. So it will be 10-10. to Third and nine now for the Jets. Trying to, you know, match the Jaguars' most recent touchdown, but they're not going to be able to because they don't convert that third down play. The Jaguars have the ball back again. Second and three right now. Play fake goes to Leonard Fournette once again. Blake Bortles over the middle, nearly intercepted by Darren Lee. Could have been, that's like his fourth turnover worthy pass so far this game not having the greatest first half even though he has a decent number of yards third and three that's a nice pass though to Marquise Lee number 24 I think that's Richard Robinson in coverage there Jordan Jenkins went down I think on the play before he's going to come back soon though as you can kind of see about that injury first and 10 for Blake Bortles nearly intercepted once again Avery Williamson broke up the pass and Jamal Adams was almost in a perfect situation to pick that one off probably should have intercepted that one that wasn't really Bortles fault though Another pass that could have potentially been intercepted, but Brian Poole steps up a little too far, and Dante Moncrief is going to streak into the end zone for a 68-yard touchdown. That was a dagger right there for the Jets' defense. Let's take another look at this. Brian Poole, if he could have stepped back like another yard or so and then jumped up, he would have had a very easy interception. Steps up a little too far, and I guess he's a bit too small to make that kind of, to make that kind of play. Third and seven right now for the Jets, trying to extend this drive if possible. They are going to do that here with Jermaine Curse makes a really weird spin move. Jalen Ramsey kind of just gave up on that route, it seems. The Jets are not going to look to target Jermaine Curse too often. He's probably going to be shadowed by Jalen Ramsey, you know, for this entire game. Second and five, though, A.J. Bouye comes up with an interception, steps in front of the pass by Sam Darnold. Darnold had another receiver open in the middle of the field he probably should have looked to, but A.J. Bouye is a beneficiary of a pretty bad decision there from Darnold. First and 10 now for Bortles and his Jags. That's a nice route there by Marquise Lee. A lot of space. I think that was a cover two by the Jets because no one was even near the middle of the field there. Second and two right now. Blake Bortles out of an empty backfield look. Typically gets the ball out quickly on these kind of plays, and that's what he does here. D.D. Westbrook taking this one to the 10-yard line, and now the Jags are knocking on the door once again, trying to extend their lead to a two-possession one. Blake Bortles, a ton of time in the pocket. Way too much time for the Jets to cover that long. And Marquise Lee, I think that was, snags a touchdown. Third and 10 now for the Jets and Sam Darnold. Darnold trying to make something happen, maybe pick up a field goal on this drive, but he's actually going to fumble, and it's going to be picked up by, I think, Dante Fowler Jr., who, have, who is, of course, still on the Jaguars in this kind of universe. First and 10 now, Blake Bortles trying to extend the lead. The ball is tipped and picked off again by Richard Robinson, a player who really didn't get many snaps in the regular season. Coming up strong in this playoff game with two interceptions in the first half. The Jets aren't going to try anything risky, and they're just going to take this one into halftime, and the Jaguars are absolutely dominating right now. It's going to be a pretty short halftime report because not many games have happened, but the Steelers did beat the Raiders, so the Steelers will be advancing into the playoffs here. It's looking like the Jaguars will be advancing as well, but you never know. You know, the game was 10-10, but the Jaguars have 14 unanswered points right now and also start off with the ball. So the Jets will need some kind of comeback here to get back into this game. Pretty big play on this drive would be nice for the Jets, but Dante Moncrief is going to catch this one for about a 15-yard gain and take it to the 40-yard line. He's also over 100 yards, only on three grabs, too, because of that 68-yard touchdown earlier. Avery Williamson, though, in pursuit of Robbie Anderson. Nope, not Robbie Anderson. What? Blake Bortles. <laughs> Avery Williamson comes up with the sack there too. Really good pursuit stat, so it makes sense he was able to track him down really easily. Second and nine, third and nine, my bad. And Blake Bortles goes down once again. Jordan Jenkins also gets injured again, even though he's walking, you know, perfectly fine on the field. I don't remember if he comes back from that one, if I'm being honest. First and ten, handoff goes to Trenton Cannon, the speedy running back. Hurdles over some, you know, players there on the ground and picks up eight yards. Nearly a first down, but it's going to be second and thirteen, I'm sure, after a sack by the Jets or by uh, the 
Jaguars. Jeez, I just completely blanked on their team name. By the Jaguars defense, Malik Jackson also gets another sack. The, the disruptive defensive tackle playing well so far. Third and 18 for the Jets. Trying to fit this one into a tight window is Darnold, but Terrell Pryor cannot come up with the grab. And the Jets will punt the ball back to the Jaguars. The Jets offense started off pretty strongly, but has just been terrible as of late. Leonard Fournette takes this screen pass following his block as well. He's able to evade the tackle of uh, Jamal Adams, kind of. I think he got tripped up by Adams. I'm, I'm not really not sure if Adams got credited that tackle or not. First and 10, though, for Blake Bortles at around midfield, standing nearly on the Jaguars logo. Has a receiver deep down the field, wide open, and Marquise Lee. Not really too sure what Marcus May was doing there, playing a little bit too soft, I guess. I feel like he should have stepped up a little sooner. Leonard Fournette following the block as well, hitting the hole nicely, taking this one to the three-yard line. He's having a pretty productive day as well. 15 for 53, not exactly four yards a carry, but he is going to be able to punch in this touchdown here from three yards out. Pretty easy touchdown run from him, really didn't even get contested. 31 to 10, the Jaguars increased their, you know, lead by three possessions. Terrell Pryor this time catches the pass finally for another first down, you know, for the Jets. They really haven't had a first down in a little while. Third and four, though, for Sam Darnold. Finds Jermaine Curse over the middle. I'm sure Darnold wishes Curse ran that a little bit deeper, but the Jets will go for this one because they are down by so much. They need to get something going here. Going with another fullback dive. It's worked in the past in this game. See if it can work again. The Jaguars were ready for it, and Thomas is not going to be able to power his way through the Jaguars' defensive line. So the Jaguars will come back out on the field trying to extend their lead to a four-possession lead. I don't know what happened in this game. The Jets just kind of lost whatever momentum they had in the beginning. Brian Poole makes the tackle. Marquis Lee comes up with another first down, though. Second and four now for Blake Bortles. Dropping back to pass. Very clean pocket. Really no one in sight. Finds D.D. Westbrook. There's just no pass rush in this game from the Jets right now. It's allowing the Jaguars receivers just to get open at will, really. First and ten. Blake Bortles, again, very clean pocket. Really no one even near him. So much time to decide who to throw it to there. D.D. Westbrook comes up with that one for a gain of eight. The Jags are knocking on the door once again at the five-yard line first and goal. Let's see what they can do. Delayed handoff goes to Leonard Fournette, who is easily able to run into the end zone for another touchdown. Now, the lead is extended to a 28-point lead. What happened? It was 10-10 to -10 earlier in this game. Anyway, Darnold finds Jermaine Curse. Nice block from... Uh, Jeremy Hill, nice spin move as well to, you know, spin out two Jaguars defenders and go down to the 48-yard line. There we go. Some productive gain there. That was the first one in a little while, honestly, for this Jets team. First and 10, Darnold throwing it over the middle. After I watched this one back, I realized that Jermaine Curse actually beat Jalen Ramsey. Probably could have had a touchdown, but still our Darius Stewart catches that one over the middle. It's now at the 29-yard line. Sam Darnold dropping back. Decently clean pocket there. Checks this one down to Terrell Pryor. Number 35, Cole, I think that is, actually went for the interception. Pretty bad decision there. It wasn't really in you know, position to pick that one off. Anyway, and he just missed, and Terrell Pryor got a lot more yards than he probably should have. First and 10, Darnold rolling out to the right, throwing this one on the run. Pretty nice pass there over the top of Barry Church for the touchdown to our Darius Stewart. There we go, this is second touchdown of the game, like his third grab of the game, I think. Second and five now for the Jags, probably just trying to run out the clock, honestly. They have such a big score, such a big lead right now. I mean, they don't really need to be aggressive anymore. Blake Bortles nearing in on 400 yards passing as well. Could have had like five interceptions. So even though he has a ton of yards, his day really isn't that fantastic because he probably should have thrown a few more picks. Leonard Fournette, though, having a pretty productive day. 21 for 87 with two touchdowns. Third and four now for the Jags. Blake Bortles hands this one off to Leonard Fournette, who's actually going to get stopped short and fumbles the football. Lorenzo Malden comes up with that one. I'm not sure who forced that ball out it might have been Marcus May I really can't see the number I think it is Marcus May that was a great play there by the safety if that was him great play by whoever that was honestly third and ten though for the Jets really need this one to get some momentum back Darnold trying to lob this one up to his running back Tel Telvin Smith actually comes down with it but he is out of bounds James Carpenter also goes down with an injury fourth and ten of course it's four down territory right now for the Jets Darnold pretty clean pocket nice blitz protection but Robbie Anderson is not able to catch the pass again a Pretty badly thrown pass. Probably should have been more in front of Robbie Anderson. Blake Bortles now on the bootleg. Trying to find someone open. Finds Mark Easley wide open in the middle of the field. And the Jags are at the 8-yard line. Looking to score again and extend their lead even further. Blake Bortles almost gets sacked there by Avery Williamson. Evades it a little bit. Slides to the right. Finds D. Westbrook in the back of the end zone. And that's pretty much the last interesting thing that happens. That is going to be the final score of this game. 45 to 17, I think that said. That was a massacre by the Jags. The game was close early on, but the Jets just let it get away from them, and the Jaguars dominated in this one. Sam Darnold actually threw another interception. I didn't show it. It was just near the end of the game, trying to take a deep shot, and the ball ended up getting picked off. 
So take away that pick and Darnold didn't have a terrible day. Not a good completion percentage at all. So I guess he actually did have a pretty bad day. Decent number of yards, but Blake Bortles 409 yards. That's going to look good on the stat sheet. No one really played too well for the Jets today. Jeremy Hill didn't run the ball too badly. Four yards of carry is always nice. Terrell Pryor, five for 44. I mean, our Darius Stewart had a good day. Eight for 80 or three for 86, my bad. And two touchdowns. Not that many sacks let up. There was a lot in the beginning, but it slowed down definitely near the end of the game. A couple players with 10 tackles, most of those guys being in the secondary. Actually, two of those guys being in the secondary. It's not good if your secondary players are leading a team in tackles. Two interceptions there from Rashad Robinson, and that's all the Jets will get for the game. But that is going to conclude this first season. Next episode will be the offseason and the draft and all that fun stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching this episode, and thanks a lot for watching this series in total. I hope you guys enjoyed the first season, and hopefully the Jets can come back to the playoffs next year. I'll talk to you guys soon.